Okay, this time we are going to analyze uh, another malicious uh, document sample. And again, we are going to use the, the VBA interpreter in, uh, in Excel to uh, analyze the decoding function to, de to decode the strings. So this is the sample. Stream 8 as the macros. So let's select stream 8 and decompress the macros. And here we have all the macros. And already here we can see uh, a string that's not uh, recognizable. So this is probably uh, an encoded string. Let's copy everything to the clipboard. And then I can paste it here in the editor. So this is the, the beginning of the macro. Okay, here we see a create object. Here we have another uh, create object. And this is past uh, the, the return value of function A. And function A takes this string, which uh, is not readable, together with two numbers. So this is uh, the decoding function, function A. So I'm going to copy this in Excel. So let's go to the Visual Basic uh, editor. I will create the function decode and then I will pass the f result of function A to message box so that we can display the, the decoded value. So I need to find function A. Here it is function A and then copy this to the editor. So that's what I'm going to do. Copy function by function And for every function that I copy, I look at the code to see if there is nothing that could execute a payload. And because by copying function by function and uh, checking the code, we want to avoid uh, executing uh, the payload, just uh, the decoding function. Okay, so let me run this. And I get an error, I miss a function. So now I'm going to repeat let me search for that function. It's a sub actually. So I'm going to copy this. And now let's run this again. Another function I'm missing. So another function to copy and to check. Here is a function. And you can see in this function that I'm just going to copy that it contains uh, a loop, a while loop here. So this is probably uh, the actual decoding function. Okay, I'm missing another function. Okay, that's a very small function. It's actually a call to the mod function, the modulus. That's also something that we often see in decoding functions, uh, a modulus. Okay, now we must we miss this function. Okay, another function to copy. Okay, so now we no longer get an error. 
we, but we get an empty message box. So that means that we are probably missing still uh, variables or uh, functions. So what I'm going to do now is turn on option explicit and this will generate errors for uh, all uninitialized uh, variables. So let's run this. Okay, and now we see here that this is something we miss. So let's search for this. And this is another function that we miss, a function without arguments. Okay, now we miss this function. Okay, here is the function. This is just an identity function, it returns its argument. Okay, variable not defined here. Okay, so var So okay, variable uh, not defined. That's uh, because now that we have option explicit, we need to define the variables. So this function here returns an integer. Okay, so this variable must be an integer. So let's declare this as an integer. Like this. Can run it. Ah, here we are missing another variable or function. Mm -hmm. Here it is. So let me copy that over. Another function to copy. So we copy function by function and each time I look at the code to see if it doesn't contain something like a create object or uh, something else that could uh, lead to code execution because that's what we want to avo avoid. We just want to decode but not execute. Okay, another function. Okay, and while I'm copying this, I see that this here function is here. So let me copy that too. And that's actually the right function. And then I have this function here, and this function is here, and that's actually uh, the left function. So let me copy those three functions. Okay. Okay, and now we are able to decode the string. So this is uh, the object that is uh, actually created. If we go to the bottom here, we can take a look at this long string because this is probably a URL or a payload. Let me copy this. and replace this here. Yeah. So this uh, looks like PowerShell code and here is the URL to, to download. Now the drawback of uh, using the message box is that you cannot select the text, for example, to copy uh, the URL. A trick 
one of the tricks you can do is to replace message box with input box. And the third argument of input box is uh, the default value. So I, I gave an empty string here, another empty string, and then the result return value of the a function is the default value. And when I run this here now, with this I can uh, copy the complete code. Another way uh, to achieve this is to put it in an Excel cell. So let's type cells, row one, column one, equals to this value. So and when we look at the spreadsheet, the cell is empty. And when I run the code, here the cell now contains uh, the decoded string. And now with this uh, cell uh, trick, we can do this actually for all the strings in the code. So here I have uh, the VBA code uh, with a call to function A. And I'm going to um, use a regular expression together with my RE search function uh, tool. I'm going to use a regular expression to extract all those uh, calls to function A with the uh, with, uh, encoded strings. So I have a function A. Open the parentheses. Now I have to again type a double quote for uh, opening of the string. But this is a problem because I'm already op using here double quote uh, to delimit the string. So I'm going to replace that double quote by its x value, 22, like this. And then I want to match any string, so any characters, several times. And I want this to be non-greedy. Then again, here the double quote. Then I have a comma. Then I have a number. And another number. And then finally, closing parentheses like this. And with this, I can extract all the calls to uh, the function, to function A. So let me copy that to the clipboard. So here are all the functions. And now I'm going to do a, a small search and replace to turn this into a VBA code to put it in the cells of the spreadsheet. So search and replace. I equals I plus one. And then cells, the row is i, column is 1, and that is equal to a, like this. And now I just need to copy this code. Here. Declare i as an integer. Initialize it to zero. And then I can run this function. So I now here uh, I have the list uh, of strings here. And this is uh, actually the sample for which I wrote uh, an ISC, an Internet Storm Center uh, diary entry. This is uh, the sample that has a list of uh, all kinds of security tools and appliances that it wants to avoid. 
This is uh, the list here you see with uh, Defender, Trustwave, Microsoft. It does this by doing a, an IP geolocation with uh, MaxMind, but that's uh, not all that it does. It also has a list of uh, processes that is checks for, like TCP view, Wireshark here, all those uh, processes. If those processes are running, the code will not execute, so the payload will not execute, and otherwise here this uh, PowerShell code uh, will execute.